When we're thinking about designing in 3D, especially when we're approaching rotational parallax, it's sometimes best when it's simple. Here, it's three images, a background with grass, a dog, he even has a little shadow, and a tennis ball. Check it out, the tennis ball is super blurry. Why is that important? Because we're getting a shallow depth of field effect, which is quite a treat. So we're going to lay down how we did this in the Webflow Designer, and we're going to do it in just three steps. One, we'll set a children perspective on the section, essentially making the section a camera. Two, we'll position our images. And three, we'll add a rotation interaction. So everything rotates on mouse over. By the end of this, the ease and practicality of building a rotational parallax animation won't seem as far-fetched. Let's start with the section. We just drag in a section, and you can give this a fixed height, but we're going to set it to 100 VH, 100% 100 of the viewport height. And we can affect elements inside a 3D space, so we can establish depth. Let's set a children perspective. We'll keep it simple and do 1,000 pixels, but we can always change this later. And let's set a background color. We don't need to, but we will. And we've done what we came here to do, which is set our children perspective. Next is positioning the images. For the main one, for the background, we're actually going to use a div block. So we'll throw in a div block. This will be the background. We'll create a class and call it grass. Now, you can size your div however you want. Let's set a fixed dimension, 1000 pixel width and a 650 pixel height. And we'll add a background image, which we can do under background. Of course, once we've chosen our image from the assets panel, we'll want to set this to center. And we'll want to set the mode to cover. This gives us a clean, cropped image. If we grab our section, we can use it, we can use our section to position that div block, to position the grass background we just created. Flexbox here lets us justify and align to center. Now let's drag in our dog friend. She'll drop right into the background as an image. Now, this positioning's a little rough. We can start by applying the same flex styling we applied to the section. This will mean the background, which holds the image of our dog, the background will center its children. Let's also size the dog down, maybe a width of 400, 400 pixels. And so we can keep track of what's going on, let's name our class. We'll double click to rename our class dog. Let's set the dog to absolute positioning. This way we can stack different elements on top of or behind the dog. If we scroll down, we can add a transform. And this is where we can go crazy. Let's bring dog closer to us, 100 pixels or so. And we can eyeball what looks right with the other dimensions. Move left and right and adjust up and down until we get the positioning how we want it. Then all we have to do is position one more image. We're getting fairly good at this, so let's drag in the tennis ball. We can put this inside the background div block after the dog, and we'll set its position to absolute. Let's organize and name the class. What are we going to name this class? Ball. And we'll set a size value. We can do this in pixels too, if we want. And after that, we're going to do the same exact thing here with its position as we did before. We're going to transform its position. This time, let's move it really close, even closer, off the scale. We can just type in a number here. And we can adjust its positioning along the x and y axis until it's just how we want it. We can always come back and tweak this later. When we're done with this, we can move on to the rotational parallax interaction itself. We can head on over to interactions. We want to, of course, create an interaction based on mouse movement in the viewport. And we can call this whatever we want. We want to affect our background image. So while our mouse is moving around inside the viewport, what we build in the animation will apply. So we have our X position and we have our Y position. Our X position, while we're all the way at 0%, is when the mouse is on the leftmost point of the viewport. So we'll rotate our background div at 0% to the left. Let's create another action, or keyframe, at 100%. As we know, our X position at 100% is all the way to the right on the viewport. That means for this point, we want to rotate it. We want to rotate our background div to the right. Once we wrap up with the X position, we'll do the same thing now with the Y position. 0% is when the mouse is at the top, 100% is when the mouse is at the bottom. So at 0%, we'll rotate upwards, so it's facing the top of the viewport. And at 100%, we'll create one more, which we can rotate downwards, so it's facing the bottom of the viewport. So what does this mean for the dog? If we preview, we can see this behaves exactly how we want it to. As we move our mouse, the background div rotates, and its children rotate as well. 
the varying depths, because we moved everything along the z-axis, give it the appearance that the tennis ball is much closer and out of focus, and the dog is in between the background and the tennis ball. Now, is this the only thing we can do with rotational parallax? Of course not. We've created another video which involves simple headings. And of course, we've created more content on the final part of the How to Build a Business Website course, in which we're creating a 3D galaxy in the Webflow Designer. But that's how to do it. We add a section to which we can set a children perspective. We use a div block to service our background, then position our images inside. Then, of course, we add our rotation interaction to the background div block giving everything we just positioned a feeling of depth. And that's rotational parallax with grass, a dog, and a tennis ball.